I am now going to show you how to go about printing a pattern something like this. Suppose I enter n as 5. It should print 1 on the first line, 2 2 times, 3 3 times, 4 4 times, 5 5 times and suppose I entered 6, it would print 6 6 times. The important thing is it should print each of these numbers on one separate line. Now I can't do this using a simple single loop. So I'm going to use something called as a nested loop. A nested loop means a loop within a loop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask the user enter the last term of the pattern. So user could enter 5, enter 6 or anything he or she so desires. So I'm going to read the last term of the pattern. First I'll write the code then I'll go ahead and explain by doing a dry run. Now what I'll do is I'll start with the initial value of i is equal to 1. Then as long as i is less than or equal to the last number of the pattern, I'm going to increment i. Now if you see what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to print 1 once, 2 twice, 3 3 times and so on. So in order to do that, I'm going to use another loop within that. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start with j is equal to 1. All right. And as long as the value of j is less than or equal to i, all right, and j plus plus. Let's do one thing. Let's try to print the value of i now. All right. So now if you go ahead and print the value of i, let's try to take a look at what happens. All right. So initially i is 1. So 1 is, let's say, let's take the value of n as just 3. So i is 1, 1 is less than or equal to 3. It will come here, j is 1, 1 is less than or equal to 1. So it will print i which happens to be 1. Then what happens here is, the value of j increases, it becomes 2. 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So it will go back here, i will become equal to 2. When i becomes equal to 2, 2 is less than or equal to 3. J is back to 1 again. So every time the value of J will get reset to 1. So J becomes 1. 1 is less than or equal to 2. So it will come here. It will print 2 once. Then it will go back here. J becomes 2. 2 is still less than or it is equal to 2. So I will again print 2 next time. So this way this process will keep printing 1 once, 2 twice, 3 3 times and so on. But the only problem is you should be able to get a blank line or an enter key after each pattern is printed. So in order to do that, I'll show you what I'm trying to do. First what we will do is we will generate the pattern without the blank line. So you will see how confusing the pattern looks. Then I'll show you how to put that particular blank line. So let's take this fellow off or let's put this in comments so you get to see the pattern and you understand how the pattern looks like. So this is the pattern. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this particular piece of code. So let's say enter the last term. Let me just enter as three. So here if you see the pattern is quite confusing because it's printed everything on one line. It's printed one, two, two, two times, three, three, three times. But I want one to be printed on one line, two, two to be printed on the second line, three, three, three to be printed on the third line. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do in this for loop is at some point J is going to be equal to I. So when j is equal to i, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it print a new line. So I'm just going to do something like this. I'm going to say printf slash n. So this part you will understand once we do a simple dry run. Now let's try to run it with this same particular pattern. So let's enter 3 itself. Now if you end up seeing you're getting the correct pattern and you're getting the pattern on one line itself. That means one on one line. 2, 2 on the next line, 3, 3 on the next line and so on. So let me tell you how this pattern generation really works. Let's take this input as 3. So initially i is 1, okay, 1 is less than or equal to 3, j is 1. So 1 is less than or equal to 1. So it's going to print i which happens to be 1. At this point j is equal to 1, i is equal to 1. So automatically it will print a blank line, it will go to the next line here. Then j has increased from 1, it has become 2. 2 is no longer less than or equal to 1. So it will go back here. i will become 2. 2 is less than or equal to 3. 
j is back to 1 okay 1 is less than or equal to 2 so it will come here and it will print 2 now j is 1 is 1 equal to 2 is false so j will now come here and become 2 2 is still less than or equal to 2 so it's going to go ahead and print 2 on this particular line now j and i are equal because j is 2 i is also equal to 2 so it will print the blank line and it will come to the place where 3 is there now j has become 3 3 is not less than or equal to 2 so you are going to go back here i becomes 3 j is 1 here you come back so 1 is not less than 1 is sorry 1 is less than or equal to 3 is true so it will print i i is 3 j is equal to i 1 is equal to 3 is false j will be equal to 2 2 is less than or equal to 3 is still true so it will come here and print i which is another 3 so it will print 3 the second time j becomes 3 3 is sorry j becomes yeah j becomes 3 3 is less than or equal to 3 is still true so here it will come it will print the last value of i which happens to be the last 3 now j is 3 i is 3 so it will print the blank line and go to the next line j has ended up becoming 4 4 is not less than or equal to 3 so it will come here i has also now ended up becoming 4 so 4 is not less than or equal to 3 and you will come out of this particular loop so i suggest you take different numbers and try to run this particular loop let me show you i'll enter a number let's say like 6 okay so you can see what happens when i enter 6 so you will see 1 is printed one time and 6 is printed 6 times so the key to understanding this particular problem is understanding how you can use a loop within a loop so spend a little time trying to see how the flow of logic works one loop within the other